I think arriving on this trip, um, the attitude of the team in the whole paddock really is now this is racing, this is serious. Before testing was, yeah, although it's serious, the pressure wasn't on. So yesterday was very busy on setups and trying to get something for qualifying. But most importantly, Kevin, Ke Kevin Doran, that is, wants to uh, have a good race car that we come out in the morning when the sun comes up and, and we've got a fast car then. So. With all significant changes made, Mimo Gidley takes out the Doran machine for another lapping session and some fine tuning. Mimo, as well as teammates Brad Jagger and Fabrizio Golin, have all had the wheel for some final test laps. And now Derek goes out one last time for Saturday's race. The driver's meeting. One last time to clarify rules and ask questions. Everybody must do the process if you've got the right tires on. All right, so it's in place. We know what we're going to do. It may also be the first time reality sets in for Derek and the other race rookies as the quality and depth of the competition they will soon face. With the morning's activities behind them, it was time for the teams to finish final prep, move cars, equipment, and drivers to the grid. Oh. And time for Mother Nature to rain on that parade. That's kind of just how sure. Kevin and I work together for a long time, and we have like a Tire feeling. Marks, that, it? Yeah, it is. And that's just the way we have to do it here. It's raining or not raining. And uh, how many people are crashing, all that kind of stuff. But for a normal schedule, we'll start with Mimo, then Brad Jagger, then uh, Fabrizio. Derek will run fourth. <laughs> Mimo go to work. At this point in the race, Mimo was covering the circuit nearly two seconds a lap faster than the next fastest competitor. Good job, man. Good job. A caution and a round of pit stops would bump Mimo in the 77 from the lead. A double stint later, he would hand the car off to Brad Jagger then passed it on to Maurizio Golin as the night and dry weather settled on the circuit. But a bit of bad luck hit as Golan was near the end of his stint. Transmission trouble, the cause unknown. Nearly two hours in the garage and the car was ready to go with Derek at the wheel. The strange thing was when I first went out the pit lane, exit the pit lane, I seen this great big lit up Ferris wheel. That was unusual to see on a racetrack, especially in the dock. Um, and then coming out the back section just before we get onto turn six, there's a load of motorhomes there and all the barbecues were going and I could actually smell the burgers inside the car. Mimo, Brad and Fabrizio all took turns in the car as a dry night, dry morning. And Derek was back in the car again. Car four, middle and low, go high. This was a good run for Derek. Comfortable in the car, he turned a best unofficial lap of one minute, 45.4 seconds. Not bad for a rookie who'd crawled around at a 152 pace three weeks before. Nemo Gidley hopped in the car for another double stint. Brad Jagger, then Fabrizio Golan would again take turns at the wheel. Yeah, let me do the end one. That's cool. Oh, that's, that should be cool. Yeah, you never know when you'll be back over, you know, so. The more near the snow than I've ever been. I'm, I'm much happier, I'm much focused. Um, I feel feel very confident. I was a little concerned that, you know, maybe I wouldn't be able to run with these boys, but out yesterday they're all here. All the big guys are here and it was cool, it was good. When a car's hooked up and, and comfortable to drive, it's it's uh, enjoyable for the drivers. It's not like they're dreading being out there every hour. So in the last few hours, we went from P14 to P10 in uh, Daytona prototype. and. Um, it's a good way to start off the 2010 uh, championship with 10th uh, place points. And, uh... 
absolutely unbelievable to be thinking three years ago, just about three years ago, I started racing, turned up at Snedeth and didn't know anything. And here we are now racing the 24 Daytona. Unbelievable.